Hello everybody. So today I want to go over um, one of the easiest ways to make rubles in Tarkov, at least in my opinion. So this uh, became particularly relevant in 12.11 with the dynamic loot changes, but a lot of people didn't know about it back then, but I've been doing this route uh, pretty, pretty often, uh, not so much these days, but pretty often, especially back in 12.11. I kind of got this route down to a science, and in my opinion, it's one of the easiest ways and safest ways to make rubles. Now, since 12.11, a lot of people, especially during the beginning uh, months of this wipe, they too have been running this route, which made it a bit too dangerous to do. But now that people have started to quit playing Tarkov or grown bored of farming rubles, uh, and now that there's only a few experienced players that are already set up and a bunch of new players coming in. The route has once again returned to becoming pretty safe. So I thought it would be time to revisit this and to show those of you that don't know about this how to go about it and to show you guys how I go about it. Now, this route typically will net you roughly 500,000 rubles to a million rubles per run, depending on how lucky you get. Uh, I've probably done it at least 600 times with probably like a 90% survival rating. And the whole route takes 7 to 20 minutes depending on your level of strength and endurance. Now, the only caveat to this is that you have to know or you have to be willing to learn how to run woods and how to navigate woods. And especially difficult is how to do, uh, how to navigate woods at night. So that's a bit difficult as most of you know, but in exchange for learning or taking the time to learn how to do that, you basically open yourself up to getting the ability to print rubles for yourself. Uh, the route is relatively uncontested, but typically you either see nobody or you encounter one player during the route, depending on your speed. So today in this video, I'm gonna cover the equipment, uh, the routes that I like to take, off of the several different spawns that you'll most commonly spawn at. And I'm gonna cover a little bit of why. We're gonna start with offline rage, showing you the route so that I can focus on providing all the details. And then I'll show some examples of some actual raids uh, that aren't offline and show you guys how it works out. Now, the video is gonna be pretty long, but there's really no way around it. But those of you that take the time to watch the whole video, you guys are gonna know everything you need to know to execute this yourself. So. Beyond that, I'm also going to include timestamps and everything so that you can skip around in the video once you guys have a clear understanding and it's going to be a little easier to navigate. So, all right, let's get straight down to it. All right, so starting with equipment, there's a couple things that are super important that are vital to have. Uh, the first thing we got to think of is that we're going to be doing all our runs at night in order to reduce the amount of risk and competition that we have from other players. Because since it's been a long time since the route became widely known and some other people have covered it in uh, loot run videos, a fair amount of people do do this compared to how it used to be during the beginning. So nighttime raids are recommended. Nighttime raids also help us reduce the risk of snipers or people beating us to the loot if we get a bad spawn. So with that being said, this is the night vision that I'd recommend for a budget kit. You can use any kind that you want, but these ones have the greatest field of view and the clearest picture, in my opinion at least until you get to the quad nogs. When I choose night visions, it's either this one or this one only. I don't like any of the other ones. Now, out here I have three different gear sets that I would recommend using, or I'm just using as examples. We'll go over this one first, which is the budget one. TV 110 is a budget option for a rig or for body armor because of the amount of storage space that it offers, uh, as well as pretty high levels of protection for a level four armor. Now you want to be able to carry as much as possible to make each run worth it. Um, but you don't want to overdo it with a backpack like the Terminator if your strength level is low because you also need to be able to move as fast as possible. Uh, this route is very competitive with the timings and that's why we try to get it done as fast as possible. Um, because since the route is so widely known, a lot of people will be beelining it to the same destination you are. and the way to re reduce risk of it is basically beating them there and getting there first. So 
TV 110 for the rig for the budget, and then I'd recommend at least a tri zip or bigger to once again make the run worth it. If you go in with just a Burkut, you're going to be full of loot within the first two minutes, honestly. The first spot that you hit, you're going to be full of loot, and you're just going to be skipping all the loot, which is not something I would recommend because once again, we're going to encounter pretty low resistance unless we see that one guy that's usually on the map with us, typically, or however many people are in the night raid at the same time, usually a very small amount. And you're going to miss out on a lot of profit if you bring a smaller backpack. Now, I have on myself a um, middle high tier kit. This is what I'm going to go in with uh, during the live raids first. Now, this helmet is a good alternative to the bashing with the quad nongs because it offers a little more protection versus scavs, can still mount night vision on it, etc. etc. That doesn't really matter. I wouldn't recommend bringing. Uh, a helmet that blocks your ears because using audio during these runs is going to be important. So bring a set of headphones. You can use literally any gun you want with any of these kits. Bring a small amount of ammunition because once again, our only enemies are going to be scavs, ideally, or one person. And uh, you, if you get into a fight, honestly, you're going to probably want to disengage because you're going to be so heavy with loot that uh, fighting is not recommended. Bring enough meds as usual, and then bring grenades as usual. Now, for your secure container, you're going to want to maybe bring ammo. This is even optional because of what I previously stated, but there are a few things that you need. You need rubles, because one of the main ways we're going to be exiting the map is through the bridge card section. You're going to want ZB14 in case you spawn on the opposite side of the map. And some of the routes, we do not go near the bridge card extract, depending on our spawn. So ZB14 is a convenient key that you always want to have with you on woods. You're going to want an SJ6 so that when you get to very open areas, you can use the stim, especially if you don't have elite strength or endurance, to be able to cross them safe, more safely and with less risk and something to hold all that crap in. Now, to get back to the equipment, Bastion is a nice level 6 helmet. It doesn't offer any jaw or ear protection, right? But, yeah. But... I don't know. It doesn't really matter what helmet you wear with your high tier kit, just one that you feel comfortable with. And what you also want to try to do is keep your gear as light as possible, because once again, we're going to be grabbing a lot of loot. Getting overweight is going to suck. And you, you know, a rig like this has a very low movement speed penalty, which is going to help us evade sniper fire. And then as an example, you see, I have a big backpack on both these kits. I bring the biggest backpack that I can bring sometimes more sometimes i stack rigs in here because seriously we're going to want to maximize every single success in case we do end up dying we want our profits to be greater than our losses if they do occur all right so i think that about covers it let's talk about the route all right so we have spawned over by the Uset camp and i know this because of my map experience now there's no, there's not going to be an easy way until you learn the map to figure out where you spawn so quickly like I can. And I've also decided to do the example raids in the daytime to make it easier for you guys to tell exactly where I'm at. Because we're going to follow the same path regardless of day or night. But there's a few tips to cover real quick before we get down to it. The first off is no matter where you spawn, you're always going to be spawned facing away from the landmines. So at the worst, you just need to continue forward to avoid the majority of the mines. Now there are some spawns where you spawn like this, where you're facing away from the mines that are over there, but you're also on a crash course from more mines ahead of you. So getting familiar with the map and identifying your spawn location or identifying a landmark that shows the safe locations of where to move to is kind of critical to avoid mines. But anyways, with that being said, so most of you should know, or I guess I'll tell you if you don't know, Uset Camp does have mines along the right side of it. So from this spawn, if we were to continue straight, like I just previously said, we would hit mines. But from here, what we're going to want to do is we would want to follow the border here and hook around. And any there are several spawns that you might spawn by over by Uset Camp. And this is the path that you would want to follow for all of them. Now, as you run through the woods, you're going to want to be sprinting constantly, and you're going to worry. You're not going to worry about people. You're going to worry about people when they start shooting at you. But speed of 
speed is of the most importance right now because you're going to want to rely in more on your speed and efficiency to evade people more than your gunplay skills. All right, so here we've reached Yusek Camp, and from about here to here, if you run up the hill on this side, you can get up here safely without mines, but anything more right than this would be a little sketchy, like near that area there. Now, a couple of landmarks to recognize here is by looking for the power uh, antenna there, that is Scav Bunker, and that's going to be our next destination. But what I like to do is I come up to Yusek Camp and say that this is the beginning of a night raid. Uh, you would want to run all the way through the Yusek Camp, come to the other side, and begin looting here on this side. Now what this does is usually when you get to this location, there's a rotation of a person coming from outskirts over there along this big open field over this rock and up here. And by starting on this side of the camp, you start your movement away from them instead of towards them, reducing the risk of encountering them while you're still finishing looting this place. But for the example routes, we're not going to do any looting because we're going to see enough of that later in the following raids. But I'm just going to go over the route and hopefully that'll save us a bit of time. So in order for you to see exactly how I run around, I'm not going to really edit too much out either. And we're just going to try to get it done quickly and efficiently while explaining some things so that you can possibly rewatch it and help memorize it or practice it a little bit easier. So from USAC camp, we're going to head north towards the top end of the map. And over here by this big rock is another potential spawn that you might spawn by. And one easy way to tell is you'll usually spawn somewhere over there. If you run towards this rock, there's a hidden stash right here. So that's one way to tell your orientation as well as looking around for the power tower. But I sometimes loot that stash. Sometimes I don't. It depends on how dangerous I think the raid is. Like I said, speed is literally your best friend during this route. And then we come back over here. And after we loot the Yusek camp, both sides, we would come over here and loot this bunker. We loot out, outside the bunker and down under the bunker. There's a lot of good loot. And by the time we reach here, typically there's two to three scavs patrolling that we want to eliminate. I'd also recommend bringing a silenced weapon because you will be shooting at a lot of scavs and remaining covert would also be a good idea during this run. Now, after we loot that portion of scav bunker, we come over here and we're going to loot this portion. And then when we're finished with this, we're going to run over towards the abandoned village and we're going to uh, loot a large majority of it. But I'm going to show you guys a bit of the things that I like to skip. So we cross the road here. Now, once you get to this point, be careful not to stray too far left towards uh, the scab bridge, I believe it's called, because there is an invisible sniper that will start shooting at you unless you cut to the right. So if you cut more left in that section, you start getting hit by an invisible sniper. I like to come a little bit over to the right from Scab Bunker. And once you reach this bush, you can, you kind of know that it's safe to cut in. Um, I learned that from trial and error and maybe you will have to too. So now that we reach the abandoned village, this house I'd recommend skipping. I've never really found great loot in there. And the more time you waste here, the greater your dangerous the greater your dangerous, the greater danger you are in, I should say. We come in here, we check these bushes for valuable spawns. Go around. Come up to the mark circle here. Check around it, stuff spawns in the bush and stuff, in, in the grass around it. And then we get to this house and we can make a couple choices. The first choice, if you really want to try to fill up on every piece of valuable loot you can, would be looting this house, skipping this house, looting this house, and then looting this house. But I typically only check in here and then I head directly this way. We're going to skip all of this stuff. And we're going to go down towards the water here so that the ground gets a little bit higher than us and covers up, up covers us from the mountains on the right and any sniper angles. And we're going to book it directly to uh, Scav Village or Scav Town, I believe it's called, on the northeast section of the map by the bridge car extract. Now, the reason that I skipped so much stuff back there is because this village that we're heading to is one of the main 
critical destinations. But I'll speak about that in a moment. So there's two routes you could take from this point. Either running along here, which can be safe if you reach here early in the raid, but it's risky because if people set up by the actual car or if they're trying to escape or extract rather, um, they have a clear line of sight on you and they can see you running up this whole thing. So one thing that I've been doing instead that I like a little bit safer is cutting across here. Now we want to push this village in a way that sets us up to take a PvP fight with a little bit of an advantage. So I take this route cutting through the woods and you always want to be looking around while you do this because the person there there is a very high chance that someone's going to spawn directly by the village we're heading to and that they're already in the middle of looting it now that person might already be done by the time you get to this point depending on where you spawn so you want to be looking around and making sure they're not doing a rotation past you towards the abandoned village and catch you with your pants down but once i reach this location i like to take a break here uh, if you need stamina and then I push directly over here and when we reach the village we slow down and we try to make ourselves sound like a scav now once we get to this village it's very important to identify if there's any scavs here or not scavs being here is actually a good sign because it's hard to loot here without aggroing scavs and seeing dead scav bodies is a very very bad sign because that means someone has been taking them out and they're likely still here so I push up through here and I use my headphones to try to detect audio in either of these houses and then we want to start looking for signs of enemies uh this door being open would be a sign you'll hear them if in there if they're in there because there's wood dead scabs would be a sign and that's kind of all the signs you can hope to look for when you approach from that side of the village there's other signs if you approach from that side but we'll get to it now crossing the street here is the most dangerous part of this area because people set up on sniper locations on those hills so once I get here, I typically go in here and loot this house. And then if I want to be super safe, you can double back this way, which provides a lot of cover, visual cover behind you. Double back around here and then come over here, get your stamina up, and then very quickly hook this into here and into here. Uh, that way they only have a few seconds of time to shoot you versus double that amount of time by the other side. Now we would loot all of this and then we would run to the bridge car extraction. The best way to run would be, uh, ideally you would cross the street at some point somehow and loot this, come out the back fence and then run towards the water. Once again, using the hill as cover from sniper angles, run along here. And then pay the car very quickly. Bam, bam, bam. I didn't bring the rubles. And then once you pay the car, you want to come back here and crouch and hold still, checking the timer or the bridge car timer and then running back around if eh, six to ten seconds depending on how comfortable you are on not missing the timing be careful if you're overweight but all right that's the most in-depth i'm going to get with these certain spots but let me identify some of the other routes based on different spawns for you guys here we go All right, so here we spawned in a different location, thank God. We spawned over by attachment cabin. And one way to tell quickly that we spawned by attachment cabin is because of this log pile and because we are close to water. Now, attachment cabin is close to outskirts, which is over there. And another way to identify when you get an outskirts spawn, which is fairly common, is this big ass open field. Um, now, regardless of where we spawn over here, because there's a couple of spawn points we could spawn over there by ZB14. We could spawn over there by outskirts by that big rock. Or we could spawn here. We follow the same route. Uh, and this is a route that I consider medium risk compared to the alternative route that I'm going to show you guys later, which is high risk. But with this route, we would immediately start to run here to attachment cabin and loot this. And it's very important that you loot this as quickly as possible because this is also a very highly contested loot location. So we'd come here, there's loot, usually high value uh, ammo behind there. 
loot in here and loot there and loot in that box and then once we're done with that we would want to quickly run this way and we're going to go back to the water and then the next step of this is rushing Yusek camp now people start over by Yusek camp so the quicker that you can get there the quicker you can catch them off guard and we're going to see basically how long it takes me to run over there so the raid is 40 minutes long and what we want to try to do is aim to get our runs as quickly to 7 to 15 minutes as possible but that's not really going to be possible if you have low strength and endurance if you do you're going to want to aim more for 15 to 20 minute raids at the most but here we go so basically the reason we're moving this way is because we could stop there and watch and kind of take a second to look around while we regain salmon to make sure no one's rotating along this way. But by hugging the water, we can use these cliffs as locations for stamina breaks with a bit of cover. And each rock basically uh, is a good point for stamina break. There's several different spots. But by running along here, we're minimizing the massive amount of sight lines we have from all the sniper points on the other side of the lumber mill. And this is a relatively uncontested route to take. So here's another example of where we could take a stamina break. These days, not many people snipe from the other side of the lake or whatever, but uh, it can happen, so be wary of that. We come this way. And this is another point where you can take a stamina break right here. And then we would come up this way, using terrain to block angles behind and to our sides as much as possible. Watch the sides for people rotating away. And you always want to stay as low on berms as possible so that the only way you're going to encounter someone is if they're on the same kind of area as you instead of someone being able to see you from pretty far away. Now, once we reach this point, we want to be careful because people can spawn there. They can spawn over by the roadblock over there. Or they can spawn by old station down the road over there and start rushing along the road, usually cutting in somewhere over there by RUAF to this place. Now, but by the time you reach this, po this point, most people will already be looting here. So you can enter this way and look for signs of people looting with these crates being open. Or you can double back around. I like to kind of hug the wall to listen for people inside of here. Uh, if you hear scavs in there, that once again is a good sign because scavs mean less people. And enter the, the front here looking around carefully because a lot of the time when you get here, people will be looting this front section. But we would want to loot all this stuff. And... It might not seem like we're hitting a lot of spots, but trust me, if you loot everything here because there's so many crates plus the attachment cabin, you'll typically be full of loot by the time that you finish looting this place. And then after we're done with that, we come up here and we want to use cover to cover to push into the tree line. It's very hard to get shot taking this route, but if you take any other route, there's a lot of people that can be set up in sniper positions ready to take advantage of you when you leave. If you need to, you could take a stamina break here, laying down or something like this, or even deeper into the forest. And then we want to run over to the road. And we want to peek RUAF to see if we see green smoke or any kind of sign. I think that light is only on if the extraction is on to see if we can take that extraction. If that extraction is activated, you can actually leave right away. And usually by this time, you've killed one scav. But if it is not activated, then what we want to do is go over to the wall and use this wall while looking around to move. Now, an alternative to using the wall would be to push through the forest this way or use this ditch. Both are good options and it depends on what's going on in the raid. Usually I, I run along this ditch because you kind of end up closer and there's no point crossing the road if you don't have to, but say you made a mistake uh, and RUAF wasn't open like you thought, you could stay on that side and be just fine. This portable right here is a good place to take a stamina break with a little bit of cover and then we would want to run to the end of the road there and that would be our extraction based on the fact that we spawned at outskirts so that's the second route that i call medium risk most of the time you will have to fight someone at the at the military camp but there's also times when no one has looted it yet and you get the complete run done in about 10 minutes with no contact all right so the next route All right, so 
This is another common spawn. A lot of the times you'll spawn over by uh, UN Roadblock, which is down the street from our UAF Roadblock. And from here, there's two options of the courses to take. You can take uh, this path down and immediately start rushing over to military camp. And if you do that, then you basically follow the last route example, but in reverse. So you go from here and then scope out military camp, move into military camp, loot it as quickly as you can, go down to the water, go along the edge of the sawmill, over to attachment cabin, and then extract that outskirts. But say that you didn't want to go that way, then you could go this way. And this is a common path to take if you want to deal with, if you, if you don't want to deal with the outskirts extraction, which is a little bit more running than this. This is generally a quicker route with an equal payout. So what we're going to do is we're going to head uh, northwest from UN Roadblock over to Old Station, which is right here. And inside Old Station, you can take a stamina break while observing ahead of you because people spawn kind of on this hill that we're going to be heading towards. People can spawn over here, which is by ZB-16, and they usually start pushing uh, military camp or the scab town, which we're going to. But what we're going to want to do is we're going to basically want to push directly to scab town as soon as possible, contest it, and then take the bridge car extraction out. So I usually push along here. Well, we got to make sure that no one's hiding in this little rat hole back here. Push along the tree line using them as cover. Don't push along the wall. It makes you too obvious. Want to make sure that no one is up ahead of you once you get to this point. Because people can actually spawn right here where the wall is going to break. And once we reach this point, we're going to want to cut in and observe slightly uh, the abandoned lumber mill. But we'll talk about that when we get to it. All right, so once we reach the wall break, what I typically do is I go through here and uh, from the wall break to here, this is a secret stash right here. So I like to come over here and I like to see if it's been opened or not to tell if someone is in the area looting as a little bit of information gathering. But once again, I recommend that you skip looting anything that isn't the actual objectives because time is critical. So I usually come over here and while I get my stamina, I take a 10 to 15 second break try to identify if anybody's running around so I can form a plan of attack. But assuming I don't see anything, we go down the hill here and there's two options right here. You can loot that, which is medium loot, but a little bit risky because they'll hear you moving in there. But what I prefer to do is push over to this house, go inside of this house, carefully clear it and look for signs of people looting with these boxes being open or not. If they're not open, I get a little bit sense of safety that the person either skipped this or isn't around. And then from there, I directly push into here and I look if this has been looted. Now, if this hasn't been looted, that's a really good sign because uh, people will start over by this little lumber mill too. Uh, and most people won't skip it, but some people do to head to this town faster because they're trying to compete for the loot. So I loot all these buildings usually or skip them depending on what size backpack you have and how much risk you want to take. Because every second that we waste in that area, someone is potentially pushing from scab bunker and stuff that we covered in the first route overview over to this location. And getting here quickly and getting here early is the only thing that's going to prevent you from being ambushed by them. So once we get to this location, a couple good things to do would be to post up either here or over here and try to identify scav presence in the town. If you can see a bunch of scavs, once again, that most likely means there's not people. But if there are no scavs or dead scavs, there are very, very likely people to be there. And you can also check the extractions and see if bridge car extract has gone green to see if they're leaving or not and what have you. But it's assuming that they, uh, assuming that you think there's no one in there because you see a lot of scavs, you can either push left to those two houses. But what I prefer to do when I uh, approach the village from this side is I double back and I go down this way because if we hug the right side over here and we use the hillside as cover, we're going to prevent a lot of line of sights from being able to see our approach. This is a pretty stealthy way to approach the village without getting shot on approach because as you can see from here to there, there's like a big open field 
So by going this way, we have all these trees to provide us cover as well as a little bit of a dip. And you can even go further down this way and really get covered. But I typically stick somewhere around here over to this big rock. And that big rock is our first location for a stamina break. And you're going to want your stamina up before you push into here. If you have to fight anyone at all during this route, it's going to be at this moment. Because after we're done looting here, we're going to be leaving. So either it's going to be now or never, basically. But after you get your stamina up, we push along here. We can use this ditch to once again provide a bit of cover. We're going to want to avoid hitting wood. I don't think that leads anywhere. I come over here. Stuff spawns here. Come along here. And the first thing we're going to want to do is get ready to breach this section of the village. Now, what I like to do is I come over here and I shine a light through here. And you want to make sure that door is closed. And then you want to make sure that door is closed. If they're open, someone is here looting. And those are two telltale signs to identify enemy presence. And what you can also do is you can come over here and scope the rest of the village and take advantage of people. A lot of people don't check this point. But after that, we would loot this. We would loot the other side. And then we would push to bridge car extraction, just like before. All right, so that's this route. Uh, now we'll cover the last one, and then we'll get down to the real roads. All right, so we spawned in the perfect place to cover our next loot run. So I spawned facing this direction, and what we have spawned by is outskirts. Now, a couple ways I identify that we're by outskirts. First of all, if we look to our right, we can see the pickup truck that signifies the outskirts extraction. And if we look ahead, we see a big rock. This big rock is one of the easiest to identify landmarks in the area, and typically what I use to orient myself away from the landmines, because if you accidentally get twisted around and you run this direction, there are landmines very, very close, and this is one of the most likely spawns that you will end up running into them. For me, this is the one of the most confusing spawns in, in the dark. So I usually look around uh, enough to figure out that I'm by outskirts, and then I try to locate this big rock, and I run over here. And as soon as you get near this big rock, you know that uh, you're, out of the, you're out of the danger zone, basically. So there's a couple options when you spawn in this location. The first one would be to start pushing aggressively towards attachment cabin, towards a pickup truck along the berm here, basically, attachment cabin over there. And then you would follow the attachment cabin to military camp route. That is, I call a, ver a safer option than what we're gonna do. But I call this the high risk route because this one is, it gives you a very high chance to either get sniped or to run into contacts at multiple contested areas and another big factor of risk that we take when we take this route is encountering someone at scab town because we will be arriving there latest on the map if other people are rushing it uh and half the time you arrive there at a point when someone's already taken the bridge car extraction but we'll talk about that when we get there all right so we're gonna head northwest from outskirts and as soon as you see this wall you'll know that you're near zb14 so I like to usually take this side of the wall to block sniper fire from people that spawned over by attachment cabin if they decide to set up and shoot over the flat land in between outskirts and the lumber mill. And uh, you can stop here and loot ZB-14 because you should have the key on you, but I would recommend skipping it because what we really want to do is we want to get to USEC camp as fast as possible in order to contest it and catch the person that spawned by there if they're looting unaware or to prevent them from gammaing the most valuable loot there, if possible. So you see that even with high strength endurance, I ran out of stamina here. Now this is basically the only reason or the most important reason why we bring SJ6, and this is critical if you're low stamina. This part of the map is the most dangerous portion of the map out of all of it, in my opinion. This is where you'll die the most, and this is where you'll get in the most contact, at least in this first portion of the raid where you're rotating to the first spot. Now, a couple of reasons being is, obviously, there is no cover. Now, the problem with that is people know that this is a hard place to maneuver because there's no cover, and it's a hard place to defend from snipers. And people know that people generally like to push this way from outskirts. This is the most direct, convenient path to take to USEC camp. There's some other ways we could work around the tree line, around the edge, go up the mountain from a different angle, but we would be late to the loot if we did that. And in my opinion, this is, you know, Valuing speed over 
safety is my recommendation. So once we get to this point, we would not want to take a path through the middle like this. If we want to be careful, we would want to work a little bit around the tree line and then ideally get to these trees so that we have some cover from here. <clears throat> because someone spawns at the top of this by the crater that we're going to take a look at. And a common thing that they do is to post up along these rocks and snipe you as you come over here. But let's go take a look up there so we can understand a little bit better. But the reason we want the SJ-6 is so that we can more efficiently and safely cross this open area. So if we come up here, this is where people spawn. They spawn in this little pit. And what people will commonly do is come over here and set up on this location or any of these locations and wait for you. So you can see how little cover there really is. And it's very, very dangerous. I'm sure that is apparent. Now, assuming that you didn't get shot in the approach and you didn't die or you, you didn't have to deal with anybody, what we want to do is we want to come over here and we want to look to see if we see anyone moving around. It's going to be nighttime. You're not going to be able to see much. But just get your stamina back and then get ready to push. So we're going to directly push over to USEC. Now, once we reach this point, I like to slow down and get ready for a fight. I typically, if I'm feeling lazy, I come along this edge. And the first thing we're going to look for, we want to look to see uh, if that table's been looted. We want to see if that is open. We want to look and see if that is open. And that'll give us some indicators that someone is here looting. And also this crate or anything, we want to listen and make sure no one's around here. Now, an alternate method of attack here would be instead of going left around the rock, you can actually get up here, but it's very stamina intensive. But if you come up here, you can use this. There's some good spawns up here too, but you can use this to look around and look down on the enemy. The only thing is with someone jumping, they might hear you, but at least you'll have the advantage to be able to disengage back down the rock if they get the jump on you. But typically I'll come up here, I'll look around, and then you can actually do something like this. And enter the camp that way and start looting. Now, another thing to be aware of when you reach here, sometimes people will post up on this rock. And I like to use this rock as well. This is a good way to suss out the other side of the camp before you move in in case someone is here looting. Like I said, people spawn literally by the camp or by that rock or by scab bunkers. So the chances of you encountering someone here is very high. But I typically use this rock to then move into this camp. And then from here, we would start the same route that we covered earlier where we would start where we started over there and came over here but we would loot all this and then go scab bunker and then go to that bunker well we go over there to the scab bunker and then we cut to the abandoned village and then we would rush to the scab town but typically sometime around here or in the abandoned village you want to check your extractions because whoever spawned by scab town is typically leaving from the bridge car extract if they're doing the same run by that time and if you see it go green you're going to want to uh, basically skip it and alter your route to extract and we'll show you the alternate extraction route now if bridge car extract becomes unavailable to you now one one small detail as we work our way towards where the alternate route is going to start if you do come to this portion and decide to loot the abandoned village um Looting this house is usually okay, but in between here in these woods and usually around this house, there are typically a lot of cultists hanging out a lot of the time. So looting this house might not be recommended. But one thing that you can do if you do decide to take the risk is you can also come in here and run up with this rock, run over this boat, and come over here. And valuables spawn in here. I found a graphics card in there before. And valuables also spawn in this boat such as bitcoins, clocks, golden roosters, whatever. All right, so we're by, we're at the rock passage that's down the water a little bit from uh, Scab Bridge and the abandoned village. And typically at this point is the, the part of the map where you'll reach where you'll see if someone is extracting from the bridge car ext extraction. So if we wanted to alter our route at any time, we would want to basically follow this path. Uh, not this path exactly, but the main goal would remain the same where we're going to want to make our way to the Eastern Rocks wall break and start working our way from there. Now, usually if you were lucky enough to spawn over by outskirts, you'll have the extractions that I have, 
which means that there's an extraction fairly close to us that we can take in as an alternative. But there will also be some times that you don't have these extractions available because you spawn by like military camp, for example. And in that case, you would kind of want to follow the same route that I'm going to show you guys, but I'll mention that when we get there. So what we're trying to do now is we're going to work our way around the scab town there, skipping it. Because if someone already took bridge car extraction, it's going to be looted. And we're going to work our way through the forest over to the abandoned lumber mill. While trying to keep things in between us and the mountain stash. And things in between us and the scab town. Because people do get there late and still check it out. And then we're going to want to go around the lumber mill here. Because you can either check it if you still need some loot. Or what have you. But that's also very risky. At this point you're going to be... Pretty full of loot and I'd recommend just prioritizing leaving. We're going to want to skirt around it. Hug this rock coming up. And then we're going to want to work our way in between the rock that we're going to use as cover. We have good cover on our right, even though it might not feel like it. And then we're going to go to that stash that we saw previously. Now, once we reach here, it's very simple to extract with the outskirts spawns. We would go down this road, or down towards this road, over to this gate. And this gate right here is Northern UN Roadblock, and then we could extract. But let's say that we start at the military camp. And we came up here and we got to this point and we saw that bridge car extract was being taken. We would basically want to double back. And then go this way. To the mountain stash. Go over the mountain stash to the opposite side where you'll be by USEC, and then backtrack the route that we uh, use when we go outskirts to USEC, but in reverse, and extract you that ZB-14 or outskirts. But we'll not get into that in too much detail. I think this is enough of an overview for many of you. And if not, then you'll see me do these exact routes, because I stick to basically the same routes every time based on what spawn in the live portion of the raids that I'm going to show you guys now, probably in another video. So, all right. Hopefully you guys understand all this, and if not, just rewatch it, and let's get down to the real deal.